This is Normanton, Queen of the Gulf Country, capital of the huge shire of Carpentaria. Things are big here, including the crocodiles from the Norman River. Normanton still has a railway station. Classified by the National Trust, it's a grand station in the classic Queensland style. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on board the Gulf The oddest thing about this railway line is that it was first planned to link to the main Townsville line at Cloncurry. Gold changes everything, and the line was diverted at the last minute to a new rush at Croydon. That's where it still goes, Croydon and nowhere else. Well, nowhere you're likely to have heard of. Over on the east coast of Queensland, a railway was built from Cooktown to Laura, even further north than the Gulf Country. Cooktown became the port, and a roaring town of 40,000, with 94 pubs lining Charlotte Street. The track followed the Endeavour River west through the mangrove flats. In its last year, a small rail car, powered by a motor truck engine, and combined with an open window passenger section, ran once a week. For a glimpse of what train travel was like on the Laura Cooktown line, watch now for the historic footage of the last motor train, RM58, crossing the Dighton River Bridge and passing through Normandy. Back in the Gulf Country, they had a better idea. They kept their railway line. And they have their rail motor, RM60. RM60 operated up here on this line between 1960 through till 1964. It was then just parked up in the backyard of the Normanton station until it finally got sent down to Townsville to be refurbished and then brought back up here to this line. And this is Croydon. Probably not Journey's End. Most will go back to Normanton by coach in the afternoon or by the Gulflander next morning. Croydon has a very interesting past, and what's left is picturesque. The line south to Ravenshoe mainly carried tin. This exciting and challenging rail line climbs the Herberton Range at a steep angle through State Forest till it reaches the Summit Tunnel. They left us a mighty legacy of mountain lines and tunnels and bridges. Still there, still sound, still capable of being put to use with the growing tourist demand for adventurous train travel through remote country. Further south, at the end of the line, the age of steam lives on. We actually took over the railway in 1988 when the railways closed down. He couldn't see really why it was closed down as it was a very bustling, busy railway station, especially so far as goods was concerned. In the wartime, in the Second World War, there was many thousands of soldiers came by train to this area as it was a training and repatriation area. We have carried on this tradition as we have a special carriage which is an army railway carriage as a memorial to the soldiers of the Second and First World War and we run this on Anzac Day. A unique journey to Queensland's highest railway station operates on Sundays and on Anzac Day with the last working D17 locomotive in the world. Back where we began this story, in the Gulf Country, with the Gulflander train. We're in Croydon, and we're about to begin the last leg of our journey, back to Normanton. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome back aboard the Gulflander, and uh, welcome aboard to those uh, passengers who are new with us today, uh, this lovely Thursday morning. 
Now today uh, on the way back to Normanton we'll be making a couple of extra stops for you. Uh, we're going to uh, stop on the other side of the True Blue Hills uh, at the old mining town of Golden Gate, which I hope you'll find interesting. Well, it's a journey into the past on the old Golflander, but it's a journey into the future too. We have to keep on preserving the best of our Australian heritage, and this is the way to go. We hope you've enjoyed the trip. Cheers. <laughs>